who was Procopius? That is the topic that we will be discussing today on uh, this edition of the Saturdays for the Byzantines podcast. My name is Professor Wren. I am your host. Not actually a PhD, don't actually work at a university, not a real professor. Uh, with that out of the way, uh, yeah, so today we're going to be talking about Procopius. As we move into the reign of Justinian, the emperor, the, the Eastern Roman emperor Justinian, uh, our main source for that time period is going to be this guy named Procopius. So I thought it'd be interesting to take a minute to uh, do a little look into who, who is Procopius, who's the man behind the history. Before we get into that, I just want to remind everybody to please uh, give this video a like if you found it, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and hit the notification bell so you never miss another episode. We had a lot of uh, lots of subscribers this week, um, uh, pot, uh, nearly doubled. We nearly doubled our, or actually, it was it was really more than doubled the number of subscribers. So that's really awesome. So thank you uh, everyone to everyone who's subscribed. I hope you uh, enjoy the content I've put out so far, and I hope you continue enjoying the content that we'll be putting out here as time goes on. Uh, and if you want to, you know interact with me, the best way to do that is in the YouTube comments. Uh, and if you have questions, I can answer them in videos and sometimes even like our last video about identity in the Holy Roman Empire, uh, that was inspired by a question from a, a comment from a subscriber. So uh, yeah, you know, you never know if you're, if a, a comment you leave is going to uh, become, become the topic for a show. Also, if you are listening on Apple Podcasts or Google Play, please give us a follow there as well. And especially if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please leave us a five-star review. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook at Professor Wren, uh, where I post updates about the show, sometimes uh, memes and other, maybe might do some This Day in History every now and then if it pertains to something we're talking about here in this little lecture series, uh, so to speak. Uh, for those of you who are new, I do want to... Uh, you know, my, my idea for this, for this series on the Byzantines is, is essentially like if I were to teach a Byzantine history class, this, these would essentially be the lectures that I would be giving. Um, because for a lot of people, you know, this kind of history is not taught in, in uh, K through 12 schools. Uh, you, you're not going to learn this stuff in high school, really, or maybe, maybe in passing, you know, in a world, in a world history class. Uh, but you're not going to go into it in any sort of certainly not the detail that we're going into in this in this series. Uh, really, you would have to uh, go to college to 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 get a kind of class like that. And here now you can get it for free on YouTube. So, uh, uh, one of the books that I will be using here uh, a lot for when we talk about the Wars of Justinian is the aptly named Wars of Justinian by Procopius. And again, we're talking about Procopius here today. This is a Hackett classic book that I bought on Amazon. It was translated by H.B. Dewing uh, back in the 1920s. And then uh, it has been revised, modernized with an introduction and notes by Anthony uh, Cal Caldellis. Uh, he's from Ohio State University. And he, uh, he was actually, uh, he's Greek himself. So uh, he's given it a bit of an update and um, I think as well used more uh, Greek versions of names than, than the old Latin, it seems like. One, one note I will make on this is when I, I'll, you know, I'll read out of this occasionally when, when we do our, um, our episodes on, on the wars and Belisarius fighting in North Africa and Italy, et cetera. Um, Procopius is going to refer to Constantinople as Byzantium. I don't particularly know why he chose to call it Byzantium instead of Constantinople, but I figured, I, I'll, I mean, I'll remind you guys as we, when we, when we get to that point in, in, the, in the lectures, but I thought I would bring that up. It was it could, because when I was reading it, especially I was, I was looking at this, I was like, why is he talking? I was like, what is he talking about Byzantium? And after a while, you kind of realize that he's, ta he's talking about Constantinople. But anyway... <clears throat> Let's get into who was Procopius. So Procopius was born in the city of Caesarea 
in the province of Palestina Prima. Uh, there were a number of different Caesareas in the, in the Roman Empire, but this one we're referring to the one in uh, the modern, you know, we could call it the Levant. I think, I think this would probably be in Israel today. Um, and the area he came from was considered to be one of pretty rich intellectual tradition, the Bishop Eusebius, who I believe we talked about a bit in our episodes about Constantine. That was way back at the beginning of the series. You can go check out, we, uh, I did three, I think, episodes on, on Constantine. So that'd be worth a, a listen for you guys. But Eusebius was, uh, not just a bishop from that area, but also, a uh, pretty well-known intellectual. And so from that, the, a tradition kind of, and, and I mean, this area of the world has, has even longer intellectual uh, tradition than that. I mean, goodness, the, the Eastern coast of the Mediterranean, you know, the Phoenicians developed the, the first alphabet uh, thousands of years, over a thousand years before uh, this, this story occurs. Procopius was educated in Greek rhetoric and classical history, and you can certainly tell from his writing that he is really influenced by Greek historians, especially guys like Thucydides and Homer. When you pick up, when you open book one, this is so. Uh, there are seven. There are seven books within the book here, and uh, one. Uh, when you open to book one in the first two pages, at least in this edition of the text, Procopius makes, I think, seven to 10 references to the Iliad. So you can, you can tell he has a, he's he heavily influenced by guys like Homer and Thucydides, the ancient Greek historians who he studied when he, you know, he's, he mastered a Greek, both, both Koine and ancient Greek. And then he seems to have had some kind of, I mean, he would have known Latin his Latin was almost certainly not as good as his Greek. And then, you know, maybe he knew some Syriac, maybe he's, he knew some Aramaic, but certainly not to the extent that he knew Greek and to a lesser extent, Latin. Excuse me. He worked, uh, he also seems to have had some legal training. And uh, when you go, when a, a lot of these guys, when they went to study rhetoric, part of, you know, a lot of what they were learning that for was for, legal training because you had to make legal arguments and you had to be persuasive and be a good public speaker. But Belisarius worked as a legal advisor. No, I'm sorry. Procopius worked at a, worked as a legal advisor to Belisarius. And that's kind of how Procopius gets in the know, so to speak, when it comes to what's going on. You know, he, he follows Belisarius on his campaigns, both in the East and the West. You know, Belisarius is probably better known for his campaigns against the Vandals and the Goths. But he also spent a lot of, a, a good deal of time and probably, you know, really uh, uh, came up the ranks fighting against the Persians and the other, uh, there's a campaign that the Romans had going on and off in what is today uh, Georgia, uh, Georgia, the country, not Georgia, the state. I, Maybe I should assume. Maybe I should assume that my intelligent, my my audience is intelligent enough to, to understand that when I'm talking about ancient history, we're not talking about the state of Georgia. Uh, I'm I'm sure most of you guys listening would know that, but yeah, you never know. Sometimes you never know. And so and so right. And uh, Procopius was even around for the Nika riots, which we will talk uh, a, a good amount about when we kind of do. We'll do an kind of who was Justinian type lecture. And I'll talk about, because one of the significant early events with the Emperor Justinian were these riots that happened in Constantinople as a result of something, something that went on at a, a, a chariot race. The chariot races were a big deal. That was kind of like the NFL, you know, uh, or, uh, you know, a, a premier soccer league, like the English Premier League in, um, in, uh, in uh, the Byzantine Empire. Uh, cherry race, especially especially after especially after gladiator games are outlawed and so procopius travels with belisarius during his various campaigns and uh, when he's reconquering the west and belisarius writes a, a series of of histories about each campaign 
And so there's a total, there's actually a total of eight volumes in this. Now, not each volume is dedicated to just one campaign. So for example, the Vandalic Wars, which I've been reading in the last few days, are in books three and four. Uh, the Persian campaigns, I believe that's book one. And so not, not, every, uh, not every war that Procopius is following Belisarius around in is, it gets one book. Some of them are split into multiple. And then sometimes this is referred to as the, just the wars. Okay. Now, Belisar, uh, sorry, Procopius was not just limited to writing the wars. He also wrote a book called uh, The Buildings, which aptly named uh, were, was a book about the buildings which Justinian built. Now, most notably, the most notable building that Justinian builds is going to be the Hagia Sophia or the Church of Holy Wisdom, which it still stands today as a mosque, no longer a, a Christian church, although it was a Christian church for almost a thousand years after it was built. Unfortunately, you know, too bad that uh, photography wasn't around back then that we could, and we could see what it was like inside before it was uh, turned into a mosque and a lot of the holy images were stripped out of it. But I mean, there's really not a whole lot to say about that because the, the, <laughs> in the book is titled The Buildings. What do you think it's about? The Buildings. Okay, anything else? No? Oh, okay. Um, and then a third book that just, uh, not just, I'm gonna, uh, this is gonna be bad, I'm gonna get a lot of these names confused, or uh, say different names when I mean something else. Procopius writes another book called The Secret History. Ooh. And this one, you know, the, uh, the, the Wars is certainly a, a history book. Like this is, this is, ser this is real serious history. Uh, the Secret History, on the other hand, reads more like tabloid material than it does it, real history. Um, some, some people theorize that the reason, because, because um, Procopius doesn't publish this. This book goes unpublished actually until the 1600s. And some people theorize that Procopius wrote it kind of as a cover your ass type deal where if, a, if Justinian were to be over, overthrown, and a new emperor came in, uh, Procopius could kind of make it seem like, oh, well, I wasn't such a Justinian loyalist. Look at all these, you know, things, these bad things that I wrote about him in this book, which I kind of was keeping secret this whole time and look at how bad he was and oh, new emperor, I think you're just totally awesome. Um, but in the secret history, there is a lot of salacious stuff that is probably false. Uh, it is very, the secret history is very critical of Justinian and his wife, Theodora, and then Belisarius and his wife, Antonina, Antonina, um, which is really, I mean, even, well, uh, l well, let's say this, you know, Belisarius is the, the guy who, who really makes Procop Procopius, we, we would not know who Procopius is today were not for Belisarius and then by extension, Justinian. So that means that in writing this, uh, Procopius betrays his benefactor, which if you've read uh, Dante's Inferno, P Dante puts uh, people who betray their benefactors in the lowest level of hell, uh, notably uh, Brutus, who betrayed his benefactor, Julius Caesar, and Judas, who bet betrayed his benefactor, Jesus. Um, and so uh, a lot of this, especially he's, uh, I mean, he's critical of some of the decisions that, you know, Belisarius makes. He's, you know, probably critical of uh, Justinian not taking, Justinian supposedly did not take criticism very well. He wanted everyone to essentially be in agreement with him. So I'm sure Procopius might've said some things about that. But what really uh, winds me up about this is the, the way he talks about Theodora the wife of Justinian as, you know, essentially this like prostitute and she would go around and like prostitute herself out and get on stage in theaters and strip naked and all of that, you know, just really, I mean, really saying a lot of nasty things about her. Uh, and it's true that, you know, Theodora, I, I think, I think probably what Procopius has issue with is that Theodora and seemingly as well Antonina were both of low birth and it's, you know, Many people think that Theodora was a prostitute. I tend to be more 
of the opinion that she, you know, her, fa- her father seems to have run some sort of circus and she would have like performed in the circus, but that doesn't really, uh, that doesn't necessarily equate with prostitution. Um, I tend to have a, a higher opinion of Theodora because, because as Empress, you know, she proves to be a, a very strong uh, and good, you know, a strong woman and uh, a good advisor to her husband, keep, helps keep him on uh, a good path as Emperor. And uh, I, I think very highly of Theodora Belisarius, or sorry, Procopius does not. Um, and I, I think, uh, I think, I think there's other motives here at play other than I, I, Justinian being the kind of alpha that he would have been. I mean, you don't, you, you generally don't become a Roman emperor if you're not an alpha, especially because, especially because Justinian also comes from a fairly low birth as well. It's not like he was born into this. Uh, so he's certainly going to be a, a kind of alpha and supposedly as well, he was pretty, you know, he was exclusive with Theodora. And so I don't think he would have been cool with his wife prostituting himself at, you know, if he, if he's exclusive with his wife and is very much an alpha male, um, those guys generally would not be cool with their wives stepping out on them. Just, it, it, it doesn't add up to me. Um, but, you know, if, if you disagree, you know, you're, you're certainly, you know, entitled to your opinion. And if you want to disagree with me, that's fine. And then Procopius also hinted at that he was going to write an ecclesiastical history, some sort of history of the church, which from what I went, from, from what I read, I have to be very, very quiet. I'm hunting rabbits. Uh, no, but from what I read, people seem to speculate that this uh, ecclesiastical history would have also been one of these more salacious, more tabloidy type, type books. Uh, so in terms of the question, is Procopius a uh, historian or is he just tabloid? The answer does seem to be a bit of both. I mean, again, the, the, his wars of Justinian are, are probably the best work of history from late antiquity. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you have, you have some national inquirer <laughs> type work, uh, in my opinion, in, uh, in, in the secret history. So he is a bit of a mixed bag, uh, certainly, you know, but, but you can't deny, I mean, he was obviously very close with Belisarius. He was a legal advisor and, and they would have been very close. And he also had access to the Imperial court. You know, he had access to Justinian and Theodora through Belisarius. So he was around for a lot of these things. Um, but like I said, in terms of his, the, the secret history, a lot of, a lot of that, I really don't, I don't buy. So hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something about the guy who we're going to be reading a lot of, again, Procopius. If you've made it this far in the video, please make sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the notification bell so you never miss another episode. Again, thank you to all of our new subscribers. Really appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoy the content that we'll be putting out here in, in the future. And then if you're listening on Apple Podcasts and Google Play, please be sure to give us a follow and to leave a five-star review if you're li- listening on Apple Podcast. So thanks for listening, everybody, and I'll see y'all next time.